All right, in this video, I have a new pair of sneakers from Nike. This is the Nike Air Max Scorpion FK for flying it. Uh, and first of all, I got this from Size Overseas. Uh, big shout out to my homie Paul that let me know that they actually had them available and they shipped in the US. I love this. Size actually used scotch tape to hold this box shut. This one, I'm excited to see. We have the uh, the Nike Air Max Scorpion fly knits. And this, from the first images, of course, like I'm looking at the shoe going, they're improving the stability on like a Vapor Max style sneaker and it looks incredibly ridiculous. Of course, I want to try these out. So here we have them, man. And I got to tell you, uh, first thing right out the box, they're super heavy. I weighed these and they're actually just a little teeny bit over one pound each shoe. So they decided to take things to like a whole nother level. Now I brought a couple homies out to uh, show you guys in this video. We got the 720s and this is the very first Vapor Max that actually ended up releasing this colorway specifically this shoe. Uh, and this is like eight ounces, a little bit over eight ounces. So it's, they're like, okay, let's make a monster truck version of the Vapor Max. Give it a wide body frame on it, a little bit of extra, I guess, wheels and, uh, and make it a little bit heavier. So they literally almost doubled the weight. And this thing is absolutely massive. It's the weirdest shoe that you have in hand. When you look at the top down view, even the heels section, it just spills over the air units. Like it's just extra wide bodied. And it continues that wide body frame through the midfoot. But honestly, the weirdest thing when you get up to the ball and the, the toe box of the shoe underneath, it's actually the most narrow point on the front of the shoe. It's really weird how incredibly narrow it is up front, but just extremely big it is in the back. I feel like they did this for a couple different reasons. Obviously, the stability issues of a Vapor Max is a real thing. Like this was supposed to be a performance running sneaker, and of course, a lot of runners do not run in Vapor Max. They don't run in like Nike air technology just pretty much ever because we're in the super foam era, which is really like brings us to the point of like is this even a shoe that needs to exist or not? Because you have Nike Zoom X, you have Nike React. Nike Air is prominent still in retros, but to try to keep on bringing back Nike Air to the forefront in a technology space, it's like Nike Air Zoom is very useful because it has a, a give and take like with the, the tinsel fibers inside of the air unit. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, that's kind of what a Nike Air Zoom unit is. It has tinsel fibers in between. You squish down and it pops it back out. But Nike Air in general and the Air units, it's kind of a data technology and it's not one that I don't think that they really need to bring forward anymore. However, a caveat to that is like I'm a fanboy of all of it. Even though I sit in a position of usually like kind of disappointment, it's almost like a remake of a retro movie that you're trying to watch and you're like, wait, why, they butchered that retro movie. The old thing was the best. That's why I think Nike Air technology in the retros makes perfect sense. The newer versions is just like it doesn't bring the um, the wow factor onto your feet as maybe it should. That being said, I don't think it's a complete loss. It's a fun pair of sneakers. And I think that's one cornerstone to footwear in general. Like, is the shoe fun to be able to wear? Yes, it's not the most comfortable shoe out there. Obviously, there's way better things on the market. No, it's not the lightest shoe out there. There's obviously better things on the market. Is it gimmicky? Probably, absolutely, yes, because nobody needs an air unit this big. Is it a little bit different than anything else? Well, it's a lot of bit different than everything else you've ever tried. But is it fun? And I go, it's actually super fun. So there's that silver lining for sure. It's a super fun shoe. If you're looking for a max cushion shoe, like a real legit max cushion shoe, this is not it. Like it's not comfortable at all. And I'm speaking from the perspective of somebody that absolutely loves max cushion sneakers. Soft squishy is my thing. Comfortable sneakers are definitely my thing. From the Nike perspective, the most comfortable sneaker that you can get if you want max cushion is the Nike Invincible Run. I'll link it in the description if you guys are interested in buying them. 180 at retail, you can usually get them on sale. And those things are absolutely insane. Soft squishy Zoom X midsole. I would also say the New Balance uh, Fuel Cell SE Trainer is absolutely a monster. That and the more V4. New Balance is literally like probably best in class uh, across the board for a lot of different running sneakers. But those two in particular for Max Cushion, unbelievably good. I'll have a top five Max Cushion video coming soon on this channel. And this one is not even in that list. I mean, it's not even close. This would be one of the worst uh, Max Cushion sneakers if I had a list. But again, I'm not trying to derail the fact that it's not a fun shoe. It's just not a comfortable shoe. Anyway, getting to some of the upper and stuff. Now, I don't have tech specs because the shoe's not out yet in the US, but it does have the Flyknit upper. And the weirdest thing about this Flyknit upper, it's kind of like the old one, but definitely not like the old one at the same time. Some of the knit pattern across the toe box looks a little bit the same, but they have like almost a napped knit up around the collar and the tongue of the shoe and it goes through the laces as well and that to me is just it's just super super dope looking like it's like almost like a nappy suede but it's a napped um 
flying it. I don't know else to describe it. It's just a really cool technique of how they created that and it actually feels really soft on feet. Visually, it's it's just stunning. I love the look of that and it adds a little bit of uh, dynamic to the upper. When you have a fully knit upper, it's hard to add like a bunch of different layers sometimes, obviously. And so this actually adds a whole nother effect to the shoe. Now, I don't know if they could have done a different color than the rest. It looks like it's a one piece upper. So um, I'm not sure if they could have actually done that, but it just, it looks really incredible. I also really like the dashes for the Nike uh, swooshes on both sides, how they use just the knit in general integrated in. And then the other direction, there's kind of like a reinforced ribbed sort of looked to the the knit material down here and then back to a different solid pattern knit and then perforation across the toe box uh, i just think that the overall upper of the shoe looks fantastic and this colorway specifically i really like with that that light bone color and actually what is the color from the box it says nike air max scorpion fly knit phantom black light cream but uh this is a size 9.5 and so for sizing these things i would say uh, true to size is probably okay, but it is a little bit snug. Honestly, I'm probably good with the 9.5. You could probably break it in a little bit. I'm not an expert on sneaker sizing though. So unfortunately it's something you might have to try on. I always aim for true to size and this one fit me fine. Um, I don't think I would go up a half a size. I might have too much toe box room if I did. Some of the other things I like about the upper though, the laces, first of all, round laces and very premium feeling, something that is just a little bit different. It's not your traditional like a uh, flat lace on a pair of Nikes. It definitely feels elevated. And then you have Flywire holding down the laces on all of the bottom holes except for the top two. So the top two is actually integrated through the fly knit. The, all the other ones down below are actually just the fly wire. So interesting move there. The tongue, I love the size of the tongue. First of all, it's an exaggerated tongue. It's a little bit larger than you need. It's connected halfway down or gusseted or whatever uh, to here and then it's loose at the top. I absolutely love that as well. It gives you the ability to, to put on the shoe quite easily. And I like the exaggerated size of the tongue. I don't really like it when the tongue's completely gone or completely integrated and you can't move it. On the tongue, it does say Air Max in a dotted pattern. It kind of looks like Braille, but it's not. I'm sure if somebody was trying to read this in Braille, they'd be like, what the heck is this? But it does say uh, Air Max there. And then on the back, it has the dotted pattern as well. That does say Nike. Again, really clean, simple branding, like the way that they integrated that. I also like that they added a pull tab to the heel. It looks really nice and uh, it's functional as well, something that you can use to put on your feet. They do have this fuse material as a piping all around the entire shoe from the toe box, through the sidewalls and then also through the heel cup. I'm not sure what the fused material is. It almost feels like a felt material. So it's not like the, the typical like fused on plastic. It, it has like a little bit of texture to it. Again, a nice plus for the upper of the shoe. Definitely a premium feeling product in hand. Then you get down to this midsole. Now, some people are gonna think this is an atrocity. Some people are gonna think this is kind of cool. And some people are gonna be on the fence. All relevant feels when you're looking at this midsole because it is a beefy, crazy, crazy, like a contraption that they created. It kind of starts off and looks the same as a regular Vapor Max. You do see this rubberized material that kind of encapsulates the shoe uh, at the bottom. And then here's where it gets crazy. It's almost like they added like pontoons at the bottom of the shoe here. It just flares out. It does say uh, Air Max on the side right here in the dotted uh, pattern in the rubber. But then it has the air unit attached to the bottom of that. And that's where it's like, holy moly, like this thing is just a monster. Now, the air unit is definitely the craziest, craziest part about it. And you can see from the bottom, it's a really crazy, intricate design how they uh, integrated this midsole because it's just, it's one massive air unit that's kind of connected. So you have a little spot on the back, two giant bulbs on the sides, two giant bulbs on the midfoot of the shoe, and then it curves around and it's just connected barely right here all the way up to the toe of the shoe. And then it has like a letter Y up at the front, which is why I guess this has the name, the, the Scorpion, because of the way the, the outsole looks. It kind of looks like a little bit of Scorpion there, uh, or a couple of Scorpions actually, like Baby Scorpion, Mama Scorpion, I'm not really sure. But honestly, the way that they created this outsole, it's hard to tell what's an actual air unit versus what's just rubber. Like this feels like it could just be rubber, not an air unit, this feels like an air unit on the outside walls of the shoe. So maybe this so maybe this middle section actually is no air, it's just uh, rubber. This air unit is absolutely massive though, and you could see you're literally like probably two inches off of the ground. I threw these on feet, I was like, it feels like I'm wearing a boot because I'm so much taller than I normally am. I mean, I'm like six five in these things, dude, it's ridiculous. It kind of feels kind of good, so I'll throw that out there. But the other thing that's kind of crazy is underneath the air unit, and again, I don't know the functionality of this, but there's actually a foam underneath uh, that is done in yellow and it looks almost and it feels almost like a Nike React sort of foam, but you're floating. So I, I mean, for most of it, you're just floating on top of the air unit. It seems almost like it's unnecessary. So 
Maybe it's functional. I'm not 100% sure, but it is nice that you have some foam there. Can you feel it on feet? I would say absolutely not. So how does it feel overall on feet? Well, I would say it's kind of like a mix between the 720s and the Vapor Max. So the Vapor Max originally had a very segmented uh, feel when you heel toe transition because they did have literally different segments of Nike Air units. So you'd hit the heel squish and then you transition and you could feel like bump, 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 like as you're transitioning forward, you don't really feel that as much in the Scorpions anymore. It's more like a heel squish and then kind of a slow roll uh, out of that heel, but you don't feel different segments as you're uh, heel toe transitioning in this. And the same as the 720s, at least from my experience, you feel that heel squish because the air unit is absolutely massive here. And then when you're transitioning to your toes, you don't feel as much of that weight distribution of the air. That's very, very similar to the way this felt to me. I didn't notice a lot of air in the toe section versus the heel. If you're not heel striking, you're just kind of stabbing your toes on the ground here and you're seeing if you can feel some air. I didn't feel like I was having massive air stacks underneath my foot. So it was very interesting the way that the distribution of the air kind of flows through the air unit because it is somewhat connected. Pretty decent on the heel strike, but then after that, the forefoot just felt a little bit lacking. Not a bad thing necessarily, but just something that I noticed. So I would say overall, it feels more like a 720 on feet from the bottom half, but more like the Vapor Max from the upper half. It's its own beast, literally. Like I said, the monster truck of Nike Air sneakers. Definitely one of the craziest, craziest looking shoes to hit the market. 225 is the retail price, at least that I paid for these things, which is not cheap. Obviously that's on the upper crust of what Nike offers. But if you're looking for like comfort versus like Nike Air technology, obviously the Zoom X technology is, is much better. The Invincible Run at 180 is a far superior comfort shoe to this. It's much lighter, it's much more breathable. It's just much more of an overall functional sneaker. If you're throwing function out though, and you're just looking for something different, I mean, you can't really go any crazier than these. It's just one of those ones that will definitely turn heads uh, because of just the odd nature of the shoe. It's definitely like its own experience. So when you put them on, don't expect it to be like this or that or the next thing. It's literally its own entity when you're talking about footwear. And some people might like it if they get used to it. It's definitely a shoe that you kind of have to break in and get used to. Vapor Max, when I first tried them on, I was like, this is such a weird experience on feet and I didn't really get it. And that's kind of like this all over again. It's like that same feeling all over again in a newer, uh, crazier, more uh, like ridiculous version of the Vapor Max. I like this colorway. I like the fact that it's new and shiny. Do I think it's gonna be like an overall huge success for Nike and like for consumers and stuff that are looking for something crazy? I don't really see it being like an overwhelming success uh, because again, it's just a little bit too extreme. Like functionality of the Vapor Max was still there, even though it wasn't really used for running, even though it wasn't really the most comfortable shoe and it was a little bit too narrow it was still more of a functional shoe than something like this. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. Overall, I think it's a really cool shoe and definitely happy that I got a pair of them. Definitely a pair that I'm gonna plan on wearing. And if you guys wanna see an after wearing 30 days video and see if my perspective changes after wearing these a bit more, uh, drop a like on this video and let me know and I'll consider doing that because it's always fun to be able to do, especially with new tech, new products like this from uh, Nike. And that's the, the video. When these come out, I don't know when they're gonna come out. I'll link them in the description for you guys to buy them, but appreciate y'all for stopping by and watching. If you guys do like the channel and the content, please subscribe, check out my other videos, support the channel if you guys can, much, much appreciated. But have a good rest of the day and uh, hopefully we'll see you back, all right? Peace guys.